you take the formula, NH equals MC delta T plus MC delta T, we rearrange it to solve for N. Why do we want the number of moles of methane? Because we want to find its mass, and in this formula, that's the unknown. Everything else is known here. Let's go from the beginning. N equals MC delta T plus MC delta T of the aluminum divided by the molar heat of combustion of that methane. When you plug all these numbers in, you're going to get the answer, sort of. Be careful. Here it comes. The number one mistake that students make, number one mistake, is that they go create well, it's not just students, it's like teachers, everybody makes this mistake, okay? When you go fast and you don't do unit cancellation and you don't put your units in the calculation, which you should always, right? You are going to mess up because you, you lose track of something here. You might not, but lots of people do. And here's what they lose track of. 70 grams of water times 4.19 times temperature change of the water. That's the MC delta T of the water. Here's the MC delta T of the aluminum, 10.6 grams times 0 decimal 0.897. Where do I get that heat capacity for aluminum? Just look it up. There's going to be lots of charts and information available, and you'll never be left uh, hanging on this one. That would have to be given to you in a question or in a data booklet. And there's the temperature change of the aluminum, which is the same as the temperature change of the water. All divided by that big H. But if you keep that big H as, as 805 kilojoules, first of all, if you keep it as a negative, you're going to end up with negative moles. So just get rid of it, because the negative just means heat is released. So get rid of it. 805 kilojoules per mole. This is joules, and this is joules. And if you divide by that 805, you're going to get the wrong answer. Your answer is going to be approximately 1,000 times too big. And the reason is, is because you didn't convert this to joules, or you didn't convert all of this like you should have. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. But isn't this easy just to be able to say, look, if I got joules here, because all of this cancels, grams cancels grams, degrees Celsius cancels degrees Celsius, I'm left with joules. I'm left with joules. I gotta have joules. I can't have kilojoules. So you can actually write, and this is what I would do, 805. Now, to turn that into joule, a kilo is 10 to the 3. So just go times 10 to the 3, which is 805,000 joules per mole. That's the way that you could do it. Now, it might not look great because, you know, it's not absolutely beautiful in terms of scientific notation. Ah, it's just a way to be able to get that right answer. So there you go, 805 times 10 to the 3, that's joules per mole. Now, you know what else you could do? You could have kept that as kilojoules, and you could actually write the heat capacity of water and aluminum as 4.19 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius. Because you see, if you just multiply the numerator and denominator by 1,000, you get kilojoules per kilogram here. So 4.19 joules per gram or kilojoules per kilogram. But then that would mean then that if you actually turn it into 4.19 kilojoules per kilogram, you have to have the mass in kilogram. You have to move the decimal place three times over for both of those. That's two different things that you'd have to do here in terms of units and numbers and moving things around. I just assume turn that into joules and then come up with my answer in the end. So, when you do this math right here by doing this times this times this, enter in your calculator, minus this times this times this, enter that in your calculator, then go divided by 805,000, you are going to get 0 decimal 0.003385 moles. That's going to be the answer. I think that's the answer. Um, yeah, that's the answer. And then a 4 maybe after that. But here's the deal, that's not the answer, because <laughs> that's not the finishing of the question. We wanted the mass of the methane, hey, guess what everybody, 16.05 grams of CH4, because that's CH4 there. Every time you have one mole of CH4, that's the molar mass. When you multiply the 16.05 grams per mole times the number of moles you get there, I get 0 decimal 0, 0 decimal 0, 5, 4, 3, yep. 543 grams of CH4. That doesn't sound like a lot of grams of CH4. Well, this question, you might not actually be asked to find the grams of the CH4. You might actually be asked to find the volume. And that means that once you find the number of moles of the CH4, you use PV equals NRT, because you'll be given the pressure and the volume of the surroundings, as well as the temperature. And, oh, the pressure and the temperature of the surroundings, they might ask you to calculate the volume of CH4 instead. 
so you use Pugner. But for this question right here, molar mass multiplied by that, and you get the mass of the methane that's burned.